final group to look at are functional group isomers. Now functional group isomers have the same basic molecular formula and a similar um, arrangement of the carbon skeleton. The difference is that there is now a change in the functional group. So something that we were naming previously, we've changed that name now. So let us uh, have a look at something like um, one hexene and cyclohexane so this is this is a new kind of a compound that we haven't looked at before um, so let's have a look and see how this particular one would come together so hexane has six carbons oops one two three four five six so hexane has six carbons and uh, it has three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hydrogens. So the formula for uh, one hexene, so you can see um, the double bond is on the end carbon. So I'm going to just slightly change the name here to hex one en. And uh, when I draw it, I'm drawing it like this, three, four, five, six, uh, for saving of a little bit of time I won't put the hydrogens in but every time I have a bond that's not actually already showing that it's bonded to a particular type of atom they're all going to be hydrogens um, so this is my hex 1 in molecule now what I want to do is I want to create an isomer so to create an isomer I can't add or subtract any atoms but I also want to change the functional group now this time the functional group is a double bond one of the simplest ways to turn an alkene into an alkyne is to actually um, break this bond. And when we break this bond, we can create a, a cyclic structure. So what I'm going to do is in breaking that bond, I need another hydrogen in one place. And I just connect that. So it's now a ring structure. So you can see I now have a ring structure, which is a slightly different structure. It's also got no double bonds, so it's no longer an alkene. The fact that it's in this kind of um, circle type arrangement, it looks more a little bit like a, a hexagon the way that I've uh, constructed it. Uh, but the fact that it's in this ring means we use the prefix cyclo and we haven't looked much at cyclos uh, on the videos up to this point uh, but a ring structure is a cyclo structure so then we go through and we count our numbers one two three four five six so we've got six carbons and they're all single bonds so the single bonds mean it's an alkane so in this case we would have cyclohexane so that's what this structure is this is cyclohexane so off each of my carbons I have um, two hydrogens. So I have, again, the same molecular formula of C6H12 for hexene and for cyclohexane. So we draw that by just drawing all of these in a nice ring, connect them all together, and then two, four, six, eight. 10, 12. Same molecular formula for these as well. These are the functional group isomers. So you can see that we have three different ways in which we can create isomers. And those isomers are based on either the length of the chain changing, the position of a functional group changing, or the actual functional group itself changing. Now one other, uh, two groups that can create functional group isomers um, that aren't actually hydrocarbons, are the aldehydes and the ketones. If you remember, the key difference between those is the double bonded oxygens either on an end carbon or on a middle carbon. So again, simply by moving that position, I'm changing the functional group. So while it's technically a change in position for that double bonded oxygen, it also changes the functional group from an aldehyde to a ketone or vice versa.